Hello and welcome to App Follower. Today we're looking at Things by Culture Code, which is a to-do list manager that wants to organize all your tasks at home and at work uh, and wherever you are using your iPad. So let's launch into the application and before we get to the nitty gritty details, let's just make a to-do with this little plus button up here. Okay, And I can type in what I want to do. Maybe we're making a shopping list here. So let's say we're going to get some honey. Okay, and you see there's a couple things I can add to this to-do. Uh, there's tags, notes, due dates, and I can say where it should be created. So let's look at tags. This later on helps you to sort your to-dos, and uh, you can also use this to say where this happens, you know, what sort of context, uh, what state of mind, uh, maybe what people you need to accomplish this to-do. And I'm going to say this happens at the grocery store, and it's considered an errand, right? And what's important is that you can have multiple ones. Other to-do uh, apps usually give you one context if they work on the getting things done system and things is a little lenient on that. So you can have as many as you want. I'm going to save this and go into notes. Now this can be anything, you know, uh, the type of funny or whatever. You can type in anything. Unfortunately, you can't paste photos into it. I tried that and I was hoping that this would, you know, allow you to attach a document or whatever. Things currently doesn't do that. Also, if you type in a URL like this, it doesn't turn hot. So that's a little unfortunate. You'd have to copy and paste it out of this and then paste it into Safari. So there's some improvement that could be done there. Uh, let's look at the due date function. This is pretty straightforward. Maybe you need the honey by, you know, not 2011, but uh, maybe by April 8th, okay? And this is something very uh, unique to things, is the show in today. So you see over here I have a today view that I'm actually in right now. And show in today simply says when this, this task will show up in this view. So you look at this view every day and you know what you have to do. And for example, maybe you need the honey on April 8th, but you want to get it one day before. So you have it show up one day before in your today view. I'm going to save that. And lastly, you can say where to create it. Uh, you can either put it in the inbox, which is sort of your initial point of entry for anything that you just want to jot down really quickly, or you can sort it uh, down here in lists or projects. And you can also just put it in the someday folder, which is a nice integrated function that comes with things. Uh, anything that maybe you do it when you're idle or you don't want to deal with it right now, you just, you just throw it in this big bin, basically. Okay, let's leave it in the inbox maybe for now. And I save that and go to the inbox. There is my to do, my honey. Okay. Now, today view, we just looked at. You get all the things that either are scheduled to, for, to show up today or you've moved them into this view, which we'll get to in a second. The next view sort of works like the calendar list function on the iPhone or iPad. It gives you things that are coming up and are not just scheduled to be on your today view today, but they're coming up soon. And you can see it's sorted by shopping and builds, which are projects. Okay. Now let's look at these icons up here for a second. There is a star. The star moves stuff into the today view. So you see that get butter, pay internet bill, try out numbers, those are starred and they're already in the today view. If I unstar it, it'll go down from the to it'll go away from the today view. And if I do star it, it goes into it. Now this is independent from the today setting that is actually attached to the task, which is great because you can look at a project and say, actually I could get milk today and then it moves into there, uh, although maybe it would otherwise have shown up a week later. You know, it's just um, a quick way of you to organize your day this way. And Things has all these little presets to make it easier for people, even if they don't understand these, these systems, like uh, you know, getting things done and all these different paradigms that you can use if you want to. So let's look at the next icon, uh, which is this arrow. It simply allows you to move stuff around between projects. So you tap on this and you select another list or project uh, and maybe shopping is the one you want it to go into. Actually, it was already in shopping. So let's move this to builds. Okay, That's pretty straightforward. Tags is where you can now finally sort with all those lovely tags that you've assigned to things. Um, maybe all the grocery store stuff and uh, now I can see what I filtered by and I can see everything at the grocery store when I'm there. 
There's another uh, way of viewing any folder is, uh, or at least the next folder, is by going on this little alarm clock. And now it's sorted, instead of by projects, it's sorted by the due date of the item. Schedule is another view. Now it's getting a little bit confusing with all the different dates that are attached to tags. So you have the due date, you have the, uh, the uh, today date, and you have schedule dates now. Um, let me make an example for this. Maybe we're working on a research paper with someone else. And we're going to say the paper right here is due in two weeks. So six, maybe somewhere around here. And I want it to show up in today, uh, maybe the day before or a couple of days before so I can pr really prepare for handing it in or presenting it. However, I also have something scheduled for the paper when I'm going to work on it with someone else. So I can put this into scheduled right here, okay, oops, there we go, and now when I save it, it go it's going to ask me when I want to schedule it for, so I'm going to say on the 9th I'm going to work on this with, you know, the person I'm doing it with, I save it, and uh, there it is. And this is sorted uh, by dates, as you can see right here. Someday we went over, that's just your big bin of stuff. What's interesting in this view is I don't have anything in it, and Things is therefore giving me this little explanation of what this view is about. And all the other views, before I touch them, had this as well. So what's uh, really nice about the application is that it explains itself to you the first time you use it. Project gives you what we were looking at before, the different lists, in a nice overview that looks like little books on a, on a desk. And I'm going to go into this. And so if you're shopping, this is your shopping project. You can look at it from this specific view. You can move things around again with the same set of icons. So the next items in this list are work and private. These are areas. And they actually don't show up on your iPad version of things until you sync it with things for the Mac. You can use it without ever syncing, but you won't get these areas. And currently, you actually can't edit them. So this project is in work but I can't drag it into anything else right here, and I can't take this and assign it to work, which is a little bit mysterious. So uh, the syncing function doesn't take everything over at this point. It also doesn't take over teammates who you could assign tasks to. However, you can go and you can take this task and send it as an email. You get a nice email pop-up, and it would also include the notes if you had any, and you can just send it out to someone directly, okay? Now, the syncing works over Wi-Fi, and uh, you can have multiple uh, devices. You can have a Mac, an iPod, uh, Touch, an iPad, and an iPhone, and they all sync. However, that doesn't work over the Internet. So uh, cloud syncing, like OmniFocus, doesn't work. Uh, OmniFocus, you could have one Mac at home, one Mac uh, at work, and they just go to the server. However, Culture Code is working on that, and they're also working on a search functionality for things which currently isn't integrated as well as push notifications for due dates and the ability to set repeating tasks that reoccur like every month like paying the bill for example so those are the features that aren't currently in things but will come later if you absolutely need them things right now might not be uh, a good purchase for you um, but before we get to the purchase recommendations let me just finish this off with the logbook what is that it just takes anything that you complete and it moves it into there at the end of the day or whenever you open the application. You can set it right here whether that happens on application launch or daily. Okay. Lastly, let me show you how things look in Portrait. It's still the same functionality. However, I have a feeling that you will mostly use horizontal, uh, the horizontal mode to organize everything and then use the vertical mode when you just want to quickly look at what's going on. It has a different feel to it. In the horizontal mode, it's also just a gorgeous interface. It works like mail, but I think it's actually more beautiful than mail, in my opinion. And that is one of the things that's a big plus for things. That's, that's, let's move over to the purchase recommendations and the pro and cons. The pro is certainly that the interface is nice. It makes it a great experience to uh, enter tasks and to work through them. The con is the missing features I was mentioning before. And you really have to think about it, whether this app at the current state is worth uh, the price it has, which is $20. 
Personally, I think it would be much better positioned around the $10 mark, especially with these features missing. Um, and then maybe once they come, you could buy those features, cloud syncing, etc., for another 10 bucks, uh, like a pro version. You know, obviously that's not going to happen, but I feel like it would be a much better uh, price point for this application. So it's a little bit of a back and forth, but let me just tell you, using it is a lot of fun, and I think it goes very well with how Apple imagined all these productivity apps to work on the iPad. It takes a boring task and it makes it incredibly fun and puts a nice interface on it. So personally, I would say it's worth it if you can live without those features. I'm gonna give it four out of five stars for now. And uh, if you have any additional questions about a feature uh, or feedback on this episode, just send me an email to info at appfollower.com. I'm Alexander Fringes. I hope this review was useful to you and have a great day.